Well, hello and welcome to the hut. This is my little refuge where I go to write my applications. Um, today I thought I'd take you through my Make Affair robot speech control application. This was a big hit at Make Affair up in sunny Newcastle. It enabled um, pretty much anyone to drive a robot either using um, a wireless Xbox controller or the wireless Xbox controller and a headset. So you could actually speech commands um, to the robot and generally understood and if it didn't it was able to talk back to you using text-to-speech so you could hear in your ear whether it had obeyed your command or not. Uh, I used the Microsoft Robotics Developer Studio um, to build out the application. Um, I used the visual programming language which enables you to diagram your application rather than actually have to write it as such. Um, and the good news is that if you want to do this um, at home and try it out yourself then you can because the Microsoft Robotics Developer Studio uh, is free uh, in a hobbyist format and it has a simulator which includes a simulation of the iRobot Create that I was driving around so you can actually tie the application we're going to build today against that robot and drive it around on your own Windows PC. Great fun. So here is the visual programming language. It has a number of basic building blocks called activities and some advanced building blocks which we call services. So I can look for a GPS, I can look for the Xbox input controller, sonar, bumpers, laser rangefinders even. There's lots there. Okay, let's tidy up the environment just so I can load in my program. Now this is the drive by voice visual programming language example and as you can see we just join together a variety of activities here we're loading the grammar file into the speech recognizer activity so that speech recognizer activity knows how to do a variety of things from the events out of it we then produce um, some speech to text so we actually can say things we can use the speech recognizer graphical user interface to help us debug stuff so that's just added there now let's actually build on our main program we can take some various notifications uh, when we receive speech that has been recognized or rejected we can test the confidence of our matching and if we fail along with speech recognition rejection we can go down and actually tell the user by using the text to speech functionality so let's track um, what our application does when it recognizes some speech. We test our confidence, then we come and determine the type of command that we've received, whether it's a stop or a move forward. If it's a stop, then we're going to proceed to actually set the power of our drive system. You can see we take a variable value of zero and we post that into the set drive power of our differential drive component. So that essentially stops the motors. If we have a move type of component, then we move down and we actually determine what the actual move command was. Was it forward, backwards, left or right? Now from those actual commands, we then determine the appropriate drive settings. So if we're going forward, we set both motors to go forward. Backwards, both motors have a negative value to go backwards. If we want to turn left or right, we have to set a positive and a negative value for each motor, either the left or right motor, and that then causes our differential drive to essentially spin on the spot in the direction that we actually want to work to. Now you'll notice that some of our activities are duplicated. That's just us using the same activity in a number of different places. So you don't have to link through to the same activity block all the time. You can just have a different one and you'll see that as we add some more pieces here. So let's actually add an emergency stop button from our Xbox controller. So we grab hold of an Xbox controller input so we can get hold of that activity, drag it onto our environment and then we can take a notification event from that particular activity. So let's uh, add on our basic activities again so we can analyze with an if statement the output of our Xbox input controller notification. We'll drag that through and we basically say if the button change event actually contains a change for the button B, the red button on the Xbox controller, then we want to go ahead and do stuff and what we're going to go and do 
is set the power for our differential drive to be zero again. Now that has to be a float value and we'll take the positive, the true output from our if activity. And so we're saying if the button B was pressed, let's post zero as our drive power. I have to move along because I've got a small screen display here, but I add it to that merge where all the other drive power values are being set and just make that a proper float. Oops, there we are. And basically we've now got um, whenever the button B is pressed on our Xbox controller it is going to set our drive power down to zero. So we have an emergency stop. So should it fail to recognize any of our speech commands we can instantly stop the robot and prevent it from running over the cat. Okay, well let's expand our uh, Xbox functionality because sometimes it's easier just to drive it with the thumbsticks than it is to speak commands. So we'll add another Xbox controller and you'll notice here it gives us this, do you want to add a new activity or use the existing one? So that's the opportunity for us to use the same Xbox controller service again in our application. In fact, we want a couple of these because we're going to check for um, trigger and thumbstick activity. So again, I'll say our same Xbox controller. Now, that gets a bit dull, so you can actually just do a control C and a control V to copy and paste. So now we've got our various Xbox controller activities. We can link them together. I'm going to use a merge. Let's zoom in. I'm going to use a merge activity to be able to bring together several messages. So we're going to take from our first Xbox controller the event of let's say um, trigger change and then we'll take from the second one the thumbstick change so merge is bringing together those two message packets if you like all the data we need to know from the trigger change and the thumbstick change and we're actually just going to cause those events to go and get the entire state out of our Xbox controller. So we're just going to actually say, okay, something happened on our Xbox controller. Let's, something happened that we're interested in. Let's go get our um, entire trigger state, our entire Xbox controller state, I should say. Now we're going to take that output and we're actually going to use it to drive the differential drive. So I'm going to tell it to set the power. Now here I'm going to actually type in a bit of a function. What I'm actually going to say is let's edit the values directly. And then we're going to take the value of the right trigger, take away the value of the left trigger, add to it the left x value divided by 4 from our thumbstick because that's a real axis value and it's quite big. We're actually going to divide the whole thing by one and a quarter, 1.25. And that will give us a power value that's appropriate for and the set drive power command. And we're going to do pretty much the same thing for the right power, but we're going to actually take away the thumbstick left x value this time. Um, and that just sets us up right for turning appropriately by driving the left and right motor in different directions when we're trying to turn. Okay, that's pretty much all we have to do to be able to say go forwards when the triggers when one of the triggers is pulled and um, go backwards if the other trigger's pulled and turn in whatever direction the thumbstick is being pulled in. Pretty simple stuff. Now we're going to um, just set up, or I'm just going to show you actually that that differential drive is set up to a particular configuration file. This is the iRobot create simulation configuration file. So if I press run now, we're going to start up all those services and up pops our simulator I successfully loaded the speech grammar. What can I do for you now? Go forwards. Turn right. Turn left. Stop. I did not understand you. I did not understand you.